God is good. Amen. I feel his presence in this place. God wants to bless you. If you'd stand for his reading today, for the reading. St. Luke, chapter 24, verses, starting with verse 1. This is after Jesus was crucified. It says, now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? It's a good question, isn't it? He is not here, but is risen. Everybody say, he's risen. And then he kind of goes on, to one of the angels says, Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again? They just didn't quite have faith enough to believe that, did they? And they remembered his words. And they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, the, and Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. And their words seemed to them like idle tales, and they did not believe them. You know, in the time, Bible times of times of the apostles, a woman's testimony was in court, was not taken as truth. She was not believed. Can you, I ask you, if they're trying to make this story up about Jesus rising from the dead, why would they first start with the women? You know why? Because it's the truth. And it was the women who were there first. And it was the truth. If you were trying to make this story up, you wouldn't have, back then, you wouldn't have written this about the women finding him first. Can you say amen? We know this is truth. It's God's word. And you may be seated today. I want to just title this and put a little twist on it. Look where you're looking. You have you didn't put it up there? Okay, that's all. He's just panicking, but don't panic about it. Amen. Just look at your neighbor and say, look where you're looking. They have a train that goes up to the um, airport now, the Tex Rail. And me and my mom had gone up there and coming back. Uh, it's a very nice train. Uh, I don't know if you've ridden it or not, but it, it, it's just very nice. They've got a conductor on there. Everything's just clean and professional. And they even have a restroom on, on the train. And my mom's 80, 87 years old, and, and she got around good, walked. She needed no cane, no, no help. She's, she was a very young 87. 
She might have been 86 at that time. But anyway, she was just a very young. Doctor said, you're a young 80 in your 80s. And um, so she, very, you know, dignified lady. And she said, she says, I want to get close to the restroom. Well, that was in another cart down, and you had to walk through the engine room. You can walk through the engine room. And she's quick. I mean, she's in her 80s, but she's she just, you know, walking, and she's she's looking like this. Well, I've got the bags, you know, and, and I'm trying to keep up with her with the bags. And you have to go up two steps, and then you walk. You walk through the engine room, and then when you go through this glass door, you push a button, the glass door's open. You go, there's two steps that go down, and she's looking for that restroom. She's just, and I'm way back here. I can't keep up with her because I got the bags, and I'm, I want to shout, Mom, be careful. Look where you're going. And before she did, she fell down those steps. And there was a, she hit one of the chairs with her nose. And she put a little cut on the top of her nose, and she was just bleeding. Um, she was fine, other words. She didn't break any bones or anything like that. But I'm like, I mean, I couldn't even shout, Mom, look where you're going. But she was so worried about finding that restroom, she wasn't look, watching her steps. And we got tissue, and we put it on there, and... And uh, she was okay, and she says, I'm more embarrassed than anything. <laughs> you know, she was embarrassed about falling. And we went home, and, and I tried to get her to go to the doctor, get checked out. She refused. She wasn't going to go. And, and, uh, and she ended up being okay. She ended up being okay, but she wasn't looking where she was at. How many's ever done something like that? I ask you the proverbial question asked by the angel to the very distraught and distressed women that came to Jesus' tomb was this question right here. Why seek ye the living among the dead? I believe the reason we often end up perplexed and confused in life is because we are looking oftentimes for the right thing, but in the wrong place. You have to look where you're looking. Amen. I'm going to say that again. I believe the reason we end up perplexed and confused in life for many, for many reasons is because we're looking, oftentimes, we're looking for the right thing, but in the wrong place. I'm going to say that again. I don't think you're catching it. Because this is a Pentecostal church. And we say amen when we get something, don't we? <laughs> and we say oh my when we're pinched or hurt. But, but I believe the reason we often end up perplexed and confused in life is that, yes, we're looking for the right thing, but we're looking in the wrong place. Don't make me say it again. <laughs> it's like that old song, you know, looking for love. In all the wrong places. It's not wrong to look for love. We all want to be loved, don't we? But you got to know where you're looking. You got to look where you're looking for it at. Come on. They were looking for Jesus. Is that a bad thing? That's a good thing. That's a right thing to look for Jesus. But the angel said this, don't you remember? Didn't you believe 
when he said that after three days of being dead that he would rise again? And so they were looking for Jesus in the wrong place. Even Jesus didn't hang around the graveyard after he rose from the dead. And then that question, why seek ye the living among the dead? What kind of Jesus are you looking for? They were looking for a dead Jesus. Amen. I'm looking for a live Jesus. Hallelujah. In St. Luke chapter 15, Jesus gives a parable about a prodigal son that wanted a more fulfilling life. How many want a more fulfilling life? Do you? Amen. Jesus didn't think that was wrong because he said, I came to give life and life more abundantly. God wants us to have a fulfilling life. This young prodigal was just not satisfied with the status quo. Living at home, had his needs supplied. Dad had servants. He had an older brother. He really didn't have to worry about much, but it just wasn't fulfilling him. And um, that's not always bad. If we were always satisfied about everything, we wouldn't have electric lights here, would we? Thomas Edison wasn't satisfied with gas lights, was he? So he, 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 he helped come up with the electric light. And, and, but this prodigal son, it, his problem wasn't that he wanted more, amen, and that he wanted a more fulfilling life. His problem was that he started to look in all the wrong places for it. He asked his dad, he's, you know, I think, I think about loyalty today. There's not much loyalty today. I'm talking about from, from everywhere, on our jobs to in our churches to just our families, things like that. There's, there's a lot. I, I remember 30 years ago when we started this church and, and uh, the presbyter at that time uh, came and uh, he, we sat down after the service, and we went to Dairy Queen, and he told me this. He said, he said, I want you to know, he said, you're starting a church, but just remember, there's very little loyalty. Man, that took me back. I thought, wow, he's kind of negative. <laughs> but, there, but he wasn't necessarily wrong. It's probably gotten worse from 30 years ago. And this son tells his dad, Dad, give me my inheritance. I want it now. You know what that's telling the dad? I kind of wish you were dead. Now, it wasn't that it was a new thing that sometimes the sons, younger sons, because the oldest would get a double portion, not because that the father loved them more. Do you know why the older son got the double portion? Because he had to take care of the rest of the family. He was responsible for the, uh, his, hus his mother and, and all those that were single sisters and all of that. He needed more money because he was responsible for more. Amen. wasn't that the father loved the oldest one more. But, but yet he, he asks his dad, and his dad gives it to him. And the next thing you know, son's packed up, moving on. He's left the home, and he's looking for a more fulfilling life. So, and I'm not saying it's bad to, to leave home, but you've got to look where you're looking at. His problem started 
when he started to look in all the wrong places. The Bible says when he went off and he left home with his inheritance in search for more, that he wasted his money on an immoral lifestyle. Or the Bible calls it riotous living. He thought partying, sleeping around, drinking, drugging. Come on, church, preach with me. Amen. He thought that that was going to be a more fulfilling life. He thought this is where it's at. This is what I've been wanting to do for a long time. I'm tired of that weight of mom and dad around my neck. I'm tired of the rules around here. Amen. Give me some freedom. And I've often found that out about people that backslide from God and they quit living for the Lord and and they quit praying and they quit reading the word. Sometimes that can feel like a big weight off of you and you feel like, wow, I'm free now. But I'm here to tell you that won't last long. It's like the kite when it's cut. It goes up for a little bit, and then it begins to descend. And that's exactly what happened to this prodigal son. Amen. He was having a good time. But the Bible says a famine reached the land where he was staying. And everybody lost their jobs and and got laid off. And, And there he had to find himself, this Jewish young man, Working in a pig pen, the lowest of all loaves, the lowest of all jobs, having to feed the swine. Amen. You know, I'm I'm wondering, what's it going to take for us? What's it going to take for our country to come around? We are headed in a wrong direction. I'm going to break away from this story just a little bit, and I'm going to meddle. Is that all right? When our president tells us that Russia may use nuclear weapons, we're in trouble. Jesus said, you know, when they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, and knew not until that day took them away. And that was in the time of Noah. Amen. We are living in a time where we better look where we're looking at. Hallelujah. And it may take a shaking to get us on our knees again. I don't know. But, you know, this is what it took for the prodigal son. He had to go hungry. The Bible says he was so hungry, he would have eaten himself. Uh, He would have eaten what the hogs were eating. That's how hungry he was. He was destitute. He was was broke because he looked for the right thing in the wrong place. But finally, he comes to himself. And he said, my daddy's servants have enough to eat and even more. And I think if I go home and humble myself and say, Dad, I have sinned against you and I have sinned against heaven. And if you'll take me back, you don't have to take me back as a son. Just take me back as one of your hired servants. Um, because I understand where I was looking before was the wrong thing. Was I was looking in the wrong, the wrong place. But now I'm in the right place, Daddy. Will you take me back? That's what he had played out in his mind. Amen. You know what that's called? That's called repentance. That's what true repentance is. It's a change of mind. It's a change in the way you think. And sometimes, and it happened to me, I had to hit some rough roads before I understood, hey, I'm looking in the wrong place. He goes back. Now, we oftentimes read one side of this story of the prodigal son. We, we talk about how the dad ran out. While the son was a great way off, the dad ran out, and he did. He saw his son. He, he wanted to protect his son because he knew the community would stone his son for him shaming the father. So he wanted to protect his son. So he runs out there and he falls on his son as dirty as he was and where he came in. And he loves on his son and he he welcomes his son, his son back. And he tells his son, son, 
I would have, uh, or, or, or the son says, Dad, I've sinned against you in heaven, and I'm not worthy to be called your son. But Dad wouldn't hear that. He would not hear that. He, he brought his son back, and, and he forgave his son. And, we, and that's a beautiful side of the story, isn't it? That, that unconditional love. But is it really unconditional? I want to challenge you today. God's love is conditional. In a respect, it's conditional. If, if the father's love was unconditional, why did he wait for the son to come back? Why didn't he go out and get him? Now, I'm not saying he didn't love his son. Talk about the, that, that action that, that allows back. Okay, so, so here he, he lets his son come back. But this is the other thing. And sometimes the church takes criticism for not having open arms enough. But sometimes it's the attitude of the one who comes back. Sometimes that attitude is, well, if they won't take me the way I am, forget it. I ain't changing now. I'm not changing for them. And I'm not talking about the sinner that doesn't know God. I'm talking about the backslider. I'm talking about the prodigal son. Amen. Amen. That, that has this attitude, they want you to change for them. But that's not what the prodigal son had. He had the attitude that, God, I'm willing to be a servant. I'm not even willing to be called thy son. I know I was looking in all the wrong places. That's called repentance. And if you'll have that attitude and that willingness to change, God will have open arms to receive you. Can you shout amen? Amen. Can you shout amen, somebody? Hallelujah. And so this prodigal son found himself broke, broken, and breaking his back in a pig farm. And finally, the Bible says he was hungry and feeding the pigs, but he came to himself. Aren't you glad when you came to yourself? In other words, he wasn't thinking right. He wasn't thinking right. How many's ever had some stinking thinking? Your, your attitude stunk. Your actions stunk. But you came to yourself. Somehow God got in that mind of yours. And you came to yourself. And when he came to himself, he looked around at the conditions of his life. And he said this. I'm in the wrong place. I'm in the wrong place. Is the pastor in Washington, D.C. His name slips my mind. But he, his mom, had ra- he was raised in a rough family. Uh, his dad was an alcoholic. His dad uh, ran around on his mother. He was not faithful. And, and he said, my mother was a faithful saint of God went to church, took us to church, and he said, um, he said, in fact, my, my mom sat my dad down and said, look, I know you're going to cheat. I know you're running around, but I got to feed these kids. So I'm going to let you do what you want to do, and I'm not divorcing you. And I'm going to let you do what you want to do but you're going to help me feed these kids. You do that, I won't bother you. And he said, that's what his mother did. Now, you can criticize her, whatever, whatever you want, but she did what she thought was right, not for herself, but to raise her kids. He said, that's, that was my mama, and she raised us in church, and she took us to church. He said, she took us in the right place. He said, but when I got old enough, he said, I joined the military. He said, when I joined the military, he said, I knew I was free. (laughs) You think you're free until that drill officer tells you, I'm your mama, I'm your daddy, I'm your brother, right? (laughs) 
you think you're free. But anyways, he said, I knew I could go out and party with the boys. I could, you know, run around. I could do what I wanted to do. And he said, and such was I doing it. I was having a good old time, he said. Uh, but he said, one thing I didn't take in mind is I had a praying mom. There's power in a praying mom. He said, and I'm he said, I'm sitting with the boys in the bar, and he said, something tells me, and he hears this voice, says, get out of here. You don't belong here. You're in the wrong place. And he said that the fear came over him, and he said, I just didn't know. And he said, I just told the other, I've got to go. I've got to get it. He said, and something got inside me. A change got inside me. I didn't want to drink anymore. I didn't want to go out with the boys anymore because it wasn't giving me that fulfilling life that I was seeking for. But he said, I went back to the house of God. I went back to church and prayed through. Got baptized in Jesus' name. And now he pastors a church in Washington, D.C. Praise God. How many has looked for, we looked for the right thing, but in the wrong place. So it's not only important that you're looking for the right things, but also that you're looking in the right places. Like the prodigal son, like this pastor I talked about. They found out like Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz, there's no place like home. Amen. There's no place like home. That's where real love and life can be found. But the problem with our society isn't that there is a lack of love or long-suffering or forgiveness or acceptance or peace or Holy Spirit or life, there's not a lack of that. The problem is people are looking for it in all the wrong places. Can I tell you, ma'am, sir, child, whatever, God did not make a mistake when he made you. God didn't make a mistake when he made you. Amen. And if you think in being another sex and changing your sex from male to female is going to make you more fulfilled. You need to listen to some of the testimonies of those that have done it. And I know that's not popular today for me to say that, but it's the truth. God does not make mistakes. A lady I knew was looking for a man who didn't drink. That's a good thing, isn't it? Except she was looking for him in the bars. <laughs> I finally told her. I finally told her. I said, honey, you're looking in the wrong place. I said, you're looking in the wrong place. I'll tell you, when I was looking for a wife, I knew where to look. And it wasn't at Gillies. <laughs> or what's that place down there in Fort Worth? I, Billy Bob's. <laughs> and bless God, everybody needs to be saved. I'm not saying that. But the second most important decision you will make in life is who you marry. Let me say that again. The, the second most important decision you make in life is who you marry. Amen. So it's, it's important that you are looking for the right thing in the right place. Praise God. And I found mine. I found her in Bible college. I didn't know she's going to be my wife. I didn't know she had her line and hook out there. But she, but she had debate on there, that big smile. I went up to her. I was going in the line. We called the quencher. We called it the quencher, and you go after and break, and you get you get your lunch. And there she was. She had her hair black. That black hair just braided in the nice braid. I could just that braid and just just I mean just look good, you know. Not that I was looking, I just noticed. <laughs> Anyways, I said, I said, hey, what's your name? My name's Andy. And and 
and Ursa was there. Well, we got we get to talking, and nothing transpired till uh, later, you know. But 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 then I saw her at church. Now, just because they go to church doesn't mean you're. You know, Satan presented himself among the saints. Just because they go to church doesn't mean they're it, okay? But I'll tell you where I found her and saw her. I remember seeing her at church. It was a big church, big crowd. I saw her up at the altar. And she had that long black hair. I'm going to stand on here, down to here. I thought, wow, I didn't know her hair was that long. And I went right up to, I was looking. I was looking. And in the right place. I was looking up at the altar because I was at the altar. Not only do you need to look in the right place, you need to be in the right place yourself. Amen. And, and so, so I, you know, went, hey, hey, Bible college. That's Andy, me, remember me? <laughs> and from there we would talk, and, and I, I knew things were getting a little heavy when she gave me this book on how to learn Spanish. And that she would help me if I needed help. Amen. But but the thing, what I'm, what I'm saying is, and we've been married 34, going on 35 years. Praise God. <laughs> Bible says, he that finds a wife, young men, finds a good thing. Is it wrong to want to get married? Is it wrong to? No. But you better be looking in the right place. And you better get one that respects his mom and dad. Amen. One that loves God with all their heart. One that's going to treat you good. Because if they treat mom and dad bad, they're going to treat you bad. Can you shout amen? Well, half of you agree with me. I thought you'd be on your feet on that one. Amen. God is good. Look where you're looking. Look in the right place. Can you shout praise the Lord? I can remember when I told the president of the Bible college, hey, I'm engaged to Vera. He said, you got a good one. You got a good one. I don't know if he said that to her about me, but anyway. The angel told Mary and the other women, we know you're looking for Jesus, but you're looking for a dead Jesus. You're looking, you're looking in the right for the right thing, but you're but you're looking the wrong way. Amen. Because he ain't dead, but he is risen. Amen. And he didn't, you didn't expect a, a live Jesus to hang out in a dead cemetery, did you? Amen. A lot of people are looking for Jesus in dead churches. And you won't find him in the sepulchers of religiosity and dead tradition. Amen. But you will find him still. Amen. In places that people that will worship him in spirit and in truth. And that spirit means with some enthusiasm, with some spunk, with some life in you. Amen. He said, if the rocks won't cry out, or if you won't cry out, the rocks will cry out. Amen. He wants us to worship him. That's where he can be found. I'm here to tell you, you don't find him at the graveyard. Graveyard, if you are going to find the good news, that fulfilling life you want, amen, you don't find him in the graveyard. You find him in a church, in a, in a home, in a life that loves Jesus and that is alive. Amen. That's why when you've been born again of water and spirit, you don't want to hang out at the graveyard of sin anymore. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Amen. I no, wonder, no longer wanted to hang out at the graveyard of drugs and booze anymore. I'm telling you, so there are so many people are looking for what, the, what you have. What you have. Don't be like Esau and sell it for a bowl of beans. Oh, God. Because the Bible says that the wages of sin, they don't pay, they don't fulfill. But if you can find Jesus, he's still alive. I said he's still alive. 
He can be found this morning. Amen. He can be found this morning. He said, I will give you life and life more abundantly. What are you looking for? And where are you looking for it at? Look where you're looking. I think you're in the right place. But you know what else? Let me just throw this in there. Sometimes you're looking for the wrong thing. But you're in the right place. <laughs> Hello? I said, sometimes you're looking for the wrong thing, but you're in the right place. My grandpa took me to church. I wasn't looking for Jesus. But when the preaching went forth, something got a hold of my heart. <laughs> and I've never been the same. I've, I've known men to come to church. My grandfather was one of them. I said, what did you go to church for when he was a young man? Because his stepdad threw him out of the house when he was 11 years old, and he worked ever since. And it's kind of wild. He was born in 1901. So I went to go stay with my grandpa and, or grandma in Charleston, West Virginia, and he said when she opened the door, he said, well, if you're staying here, you're working. He says, I've been working. I don't know, he might have been 15, 16 or whatever. He went to visit this little Pentecostal church. He said, I didn't go. He said, I didn't go. He said, I went to check out the girls. I said, Grandma, I said, what did you think about Grandpa? She said, well, I thought he was kind of cute. But I told him, or I told my sister, he looks like an old bullfrog. Because I didn't want anybody to know I kind of liked him. So He went off into the Calvary, came back, got in church, got the Holy Ghost, got baptized, and he ended up marrying my grandma. Amen. Was he there for the right reason? No, but he was in the right place. And sometimes we just got to get him here. God can get a hold of their heart. I believe this morning, if you've come with a broken life or maybe a broken heart, will you just stand with me? I believe you've come to the right place today. You can find Jesus. You don't have to hang from the chandeliers or shout at the top of your lungs. You don't have to do that. It's okay. You're privileged. You can. But it's not a requirement. You know what's required? A sincere heart. It says, Lord, I want that life and that life more abundantly. Now, I'm not saying he's promising you an easy life. It's not what he's saying. There's something about the battle. There's something about the fight. There's something about having a relationship with our Lord that is more fulfilling than any ball game, than any drug, than any sexual act. Nobody can take his place. Because he made that place in your heart just for him. You're in the right place today. If you'd like to receive him, this altar's open. Sometimes it's good just to step out. Because it gives more of a commitment. It says, like that prodigal son that didn't wait for dad to go get him. He went to dad. It showed, I'm serious, Dad. 
I wouldn't have come all this way if I wasn't serious. And so when you come, you're saying, I'm serious. Lord, I want you. Lord, I need you. And you know what I believe you'll find? Because you're in the right place. You'll find open arms of a loving Father ready to receive you, forgive you, wash you, cleanse you, welcome you back to his family. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, that's it. Just reach out to him. He loves you. He loves you today. Hallelujah. Will you just close your eyes? Look where you're looking. It's okay to look. Just look in the right place. When you're looking for gold, you got to go to the right place. You gotta dig a little deeper. 